We're here with Brad Hayden, who's the Director of Marketing for Aspen Avionics. And Brad, we've had these conversations for years now about where things are going to go and how things are going to happen. And, and the industry at all, I think we've been kind of the psychologists for the industry at times yeah. with some of the conversations. But you guys have dared to do something that is almost sacrilegious and a business that's been known to be a little cutthroat and ultra competitive and at times a little unsavory in regards to the competitive aspect. You have sought out to partner with the rest of the industry through Connected Panel. Okay, first of all, what were you drinking and where can I get some of this stuff? <laughs> well, you got to come to Albuquerque, Jim, because that's oh, there, where, yeah, that's where the well's at. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know, um, Connected Panel really is just the natural next step, I think, for, for Aspen. I don't think a company except Aspen could do a concept like Connected Panel for first aid technical reason because our products are built for the retrofit market and therefore we have to work with a wide range of uh, avionics installed behind the panel. So it's very important that we know we're compatible and we're a natural gathering point for that information and a, a dissemination point as well. Secondly, from a business aspect, uh, we have the philosophy that it's very important to work with partners, uh, these same people that we're talking about on legacy products for interfaces, but also for new products like what we're doing on the DFC-90 and of course on the KSN-770. So when you look at the connected panel concept, not only do we have really the will, but I think we also have the track record to show that we can build a platform that many people can play in and really play with us sitting in an agnostic position. Mm. We're going to provide the platform for people to be able to put data in and extract data out of the panel, but we're not going to get involved in the competitive aspect of it. So to give you a good example, we have seven flight planning partners that have signed on for Connected Panel, have announced that they're going to be uh, building applications that will interface with Connected Panel. We're not going to take a stance on which one you should use. We're not going to tell these people how they should design right. their products. What we're going to do is we're going to make the platform available and the market will, will decide what they want out there for flight planning. When you first started approaching companies with mm -hmm. this idea, yeah. what was the general response? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and it's, it's been about a year now since we started those conversations up. And it was, it was interesting. A lot of people, especially on the application development side, people out of high tech, they were very interested. And they could understand the concept of, of coming in and, and working with a, a partner that's going to provide this platform and they can participate in. Some of the more traditional uh, aviation companies were a little more suspect. It was kind of like, well, what's going to be in right. it for you that you're doing this? And I, it's, I would say that the majority of them are now on board. I mean, if you look at it, um, in, of the top four retrofit avionics manufacturers that are out there, including us, we're working with two of them, mm -hmm. and they're already signed on uh, as connected panel partners. So obviously the, the message resonated well that there's an opportunity here, and um, you know they, they really overcame that, and, and I think it's going well from that regard. We noted that this is a very competitive industry. Yes. How much of a problem right now is it to work or, or it's basically a, a, an avionic social network, if you will, <laughs> uh, to network with all these people, especially since some of these are going to be competing with each other, if not with you, and uh, and keep everything not only civil, but keep the project on the timeline. Yeah, it's really something you have to keep in the front of your mind on every decision that you make. Uh, once you decide that you're going to take a philosophical business approach, that you're going to do these partnerships, and then you take it to the next level and do something like Connected Panel. It really has to play in every decision that you make. Okay. So whenever we talk about future roadmaps for products, or whenever we talk about outbound communications that we're going to be doing within the industry, we have to bear in mind that we have active partners out there who are counting on us to deliver this platform and deliver it in such a way to where we won't take a competitive stance one over the other. Okay. So really it's a, it's a process that you have to integrate into the business. And again, I think the years of uh, developing our, our display products to be able to work uh, behind the panel with many different manufacturers and then doing these select partnerships have really taught us the lessons, the hard lessons oftentimes that you need to learn to be able to, to create this kind of environment. So that being the case, if you had to uh, give yourself a report card so far, how's it going? 
So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm very critical, I think, of, of, of really how, how our performance is because I'm always looking for the mistakes so we can figure out how to do it better. I think the industry's responded very well. Um, and if I look at, look at it from that regard, I think we're even overcoming a lot of the skepticism that was initially in place. You know, how's this thing going to work? Is right. it, is it going to be a problem bringing in this uncertified data, et cetera? Um, internally, there's always stuff we can do better, but I think we've done as good as can be expected. Um, if I was going to give us a, a grade, I'd give us a B plus or an A minus, and we're shooting for that A plus. Excellent. Now, connected panel as it sits uh, is, is has got a great foundation for what it hopes to do, but where does it go? I mean, what is the? There's got to be this mass vision for what what occurs here. Sure. There's, and that's really the exciting part about connected panel. Um, you know, we have a hardware roadmap that mm -hmm. will include you know things in the future. Um, more functionality, things like that, more integration with stuff behind the panel. But then there's what the partners are going to be doing. And we don't know what the partners are going to be doing. We know, of course, there's going to be flight planning and data logging, things like that, because there's already people out there doing that stuff. But when you've got partners like JPI or PS Engineering, they're going to be thinking up things in their own markets that we could never dream of in, in, our, in our profession or in our, our vertical. So. To answer your question on where it's going to go, I would say, you know, that's the really exciting part, and let's stay tuned and see what happens next. As we mentioned a number of times in the last hour, the whole concept behind this uh, program set today was the spirit of innovation. And one of the things that we've determined as part of this aviation transformation project was that one, the old way of doing business was gone, mm -hmm. kaput, forget it, not going to happen, stink in the high heavens and that it was going to take really new and creative solutions, things that people hadn't thought about or right. had not done before. Connected panel sounds like a transformational concept. Uh, what can we take from your initial effort so far and what you hope to do with it, and what might that mean to the rest of aviation? I know that's throwing a lot at you, but hey, it's my chair yeah, and I'm gonna ask the okay. questions. That's you okay, get, you get to do that, you get to do that. You know. So we're in aviation because we have a passion for flying. Right. Uh, a lot of us are second and third generation pilots and we want to see people keep flying. And we've really worked hard to build products that are affordable, that'll keep these planes in the air. Um, and that's something of course we're continuing to do. I think Connected Panel will actually help in that yes. significantly, not just bringing a new level of safety, but also affordability for functionality inside the aircraft. I think the industry itself needs to open up and stop looking at vertical solutions and start looking at solutions that make sense for the customer that are affordable and will go across the entire market. And I'm really seeing a lot of that. I don't want to sound, you know, all kumbaya-ish here, but I do believe to a degree. Why not? With the rest of the songs we've been singing this industry <laughs> the last two years, I'd rather hear something yeah, pleasant. Something a little less bluesy, yes. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody uh, knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for the industry really to start working together. I think AEA is a great platform for that. Um, you know, they, they bring a lot of the manufacturers together. Uh, John, who was just here, is actually on a strategic council with AEA, which is a lot of the manufacturers getting together and talking about how we can transform the industry. A change needs to happen. I'm very optimistic that change is happening. Outstanding. Take us through whatever time it's going to take to get to a mature product cycle for the concept of Connected Panel. Joe, uh, Joe Blow Aviation wants to go out and fly. Mm -hmm. What's Connected Panel do for them? Take us through the scenario. So we know what Connected Panel is going to do, you know, at, at launch. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to allow again the flight planning. Uh, we'll start with that. That's probably the easiest place to start. So your pilot sits down and maybe he's watching a movie on his iPad and then he decides, oh, I'd better start doing some flight planning. Pulls up the application on the same device, plans out his flight with his favorite application. Um, hopefully it's got a nice, easy, intuitive interface. Goes out to his airplane the next day and uh, you know the, the iPad automatically, seamlessly connects, just like we see happen with your iPads whenever you go into to networks, and, and uploads the flight plan up into the GPS, which may or may not have the friendliest user interface installed. Um, also, that device is going to know 
when the engine starts. That device is going to know when the panel comes up. That device is going to know where the location is based upon information coming out of the panel. So suddenly you start seeing an interaction between this consumer device and the installed avionics. So you're going to be able to do things like seamless logbook entry to where it'll actually capture that information and send it up into the cloud or store it locally and then can download it so you don't have to go home and write in your logbook anymore. Um, you're going to see things like flight data recording, which can be used in all sorts of, of applications, be it from uh, you know just reviewing your flight and the social aspects, look where I went today, let's look at it on Google Earth, to flight training. So one of our hopes is, is that this will actually uh, make the process of becoming a pilot easier, maybe even more cost effective, and increase the pilot population, which is something we all want to do. So those are just the things that we know it's going to do now. And again, the really exciting part is, what's it going to do for the future cockpit? Mm -hmm. What are those people out there that are building these really great applications right now going to think of? And what are the hardware manufacturers who are right. participating in the program going to say, hey, I have a new UI that's sitting in the pilot's lap. I can utilize that. Right. And so I think that's really, you know, to answer your question on, you know, what's, what's it going to do now? There's the answer of what's it going to do at the moment. What's it going to do for us in the future? Who would have predicted what iPads are doing now, oh, man. even just a short time ago? Can you imagine thinking back just a couple of years ago and thinking then what we would do with our first look at Wing X or Four Flight sure. or something like that? I mean, it would just, no, you, you know, it'd be George Jetson. Yeah, it, it wouldn't make sense. I know I read an article a while ago, it was 10, th 10 of the uh, technologies that we got from Star Trek. <laughs> that, you know, and they were talking about things like you know, now you now we've actually got cell phones, you know, right. and they always had. And one of the things they showed, and I actually remember the the, the episode showing in the the later Star Trek series, they were always walking around with these little personal devices. Well, right. it's an iPad. Yep. So you know, years ago we thought it was all science fiction, and now it's happening. And you know, when you bring something like that into an industry like ours, the possibilities are really endless, and it's it's really exciting. Science fiction to science fact. That's correct. Well, as we close out this particular segment and get ready to go to break, I wanted to uh, just touch upon a little bit on your observations of the state of the industry. You've been at this for a while, and as I said, you and I have been played uh, amateur psychologists for the ills of the industry overall uh, for a number of years. Uh, one, AEA 2012, how we doing? And more important, industry-wise, what do you see? So. I'll start with the latter first, okay. because I think it actually impacts where we're at right now. Okay. Um, I think the industry's bouncing back. I think we've skipped along the bottom for a while. I think people are finally willing to you know, open up their checkbooks and actually start spending money on things that they enjoy or, or utilize for business. And so we're starting to see the upgrades happen. It's been a very good year for us. Uh, we're starting to see business pick up significantly. People who are sitting on the fence are now starting to, you know, write the checks and, and, and install some equipment. We've seen it enough to where it's looking like it's it's going to be a trend up. And we've had a couple of false starts. I think everybody in the industry has, and that's always frustrating when that happens. I actually think we're seeing that same spirit reflected here at the show. Good. I think that, uh, you know, Paula said it's time to take the industry back uh, in her speech this morning, I which was really, inspiring. really like that. Yeah, that was very good. And, and I think what we're starting to see now is people are getting a little more optimistic. And that's good. I mean, we need that. It's, it's been a tough few years. It's been a hard downturn for this industry in particular. We've gotten a lot of bad press mm -hmm. uh, just for being aviators, wow. for business jet, travel, etc. cetera. Um, and now, you know, when, when people are feeling the pinch in so many other areas, I think they'll start to be a little more uh, tolerant of, of us out there flying around in the skies and maybe even notice that, hey, we're actually making things better for them again. Interesting stuff. Well, I got to tell you, overall, uh, I'm pleased to have Aspen in our industry. You shook things up a great deal. I can't wait to see what you shake up next. Um, one of the marvelous aspects of encouraging transformation is it basically encouraging chaos. Sure. Yeah. And out of chaos is creativity, <laughs> and out right. of creativity is progress. Right. The birthing. So, good. Yeah. <laughs> in, indeed. And uh, more, more power to you. More success to you keep building great little things and I'll tell you what in the long run uh, I think we're going to be hearing from Aspen for an awful long time. Well thanks Jim. Thanks for the compliments and thanks for all the great work you do. Well we appreciate uh, your time. Okay folks we're going to take a short break here for a few minutes. We'll uh, 
spent a little time with the amazing folks who helped uh, sponsor this particular effort and allowed us to come out here and avoid honest work and not have real jobs and come out to AEA 2012 and just spend a lot of really great uh, hours looking at where all the really cool stuff happens. So for the moment, live from the 55th AEA Convention and Trade Show, this is Aero News and Aero TV. We'll see you at the uh, backside of the break. Be back in just a few moments. Aero TV's live coverage of the 55th annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. 